Hey guys, welcome to this fertility Q&A video. I've been getting lots of questions for you over on my Instagram. If you're not following me there, this is my username. Come and find me and say hello. But I've been getting lots of questions and I thought it's time I created a video about them because I just felt like the same questions were coming up time and time again. So I do have my iPad here. I'm gonna be reading the questions off, so please forgive that. Hopefully we'll get through quite a few of your questions in the next 15 minutes or so. So the first question I have is, how can I incorporate strength and cardio when I'm trying to conceive? This is a question I get all the time, or some version of this question. I think we've been given the message that high intensity exercise equals bad fertility, which I don't think is the actual message. I think it's kind of been warped and twisted along the way somehow. What I actually think the message is, is that anything that depletes your body could potentially be impacting your fertility. Because our fertility is like our optimum sign of health. Like if you think fertility is like the as bad as it sounds, the least important part of our functioning and survival. For us to survive, we don't need to procreate. So our fertility is like the icing on the cake. So everything else has to be working properly. You have to manage the stress levels. You have to be eating the right nutritious foods. You have to be getting the circulation going. All of those things working together means that your fertility is working. So I don't think it's necessarily as clear cut as you do high intensity exercise, therefore, you're not gonna be able to conceive. It's not as clear cut as that. However, that being said, there is definitely research that suggests if you are a marathon runner, if you are pushing your body to extremes, then your fertility is impacted. We see this in athletes who lose their period, whose cycles are irregular when they're at their peak physical performance in their sport, their body isn't working as it should fertility wise. So what does this mean for you as a, I'm assuming, a regular woman in the regular world? I think when it comes to exercise, we need to ask the question, is this depleting me? Is this taking energy from me? Is this a drain? Or is this helping me feel more energetic? And I think we know the difference when we take the time to really sit with that. If we've had a super busy day and we've been moving our body all day and doing hard labor, then that's gonna deplete us. On the other hand, if we have been sitting at a desk all day and we go for a run because that energizes us long term, not just that post exercise high, it gets our circulation going. We're doing it because it feels great. Even if we have that little bit of resistance at the start, because that's very normal for exercise. But if you feel that real energy and that helps you get rid of stress, then that's a really different thing. So I think we need to stop looking at these types of exercise as good and bad. So weight training is not good or bad for fertility. Running is not good or bad for fertility. It's more the level at which you're doing it for your particular body and for your particular lifestyle. So I think you need to take a bigger look of the issue. What's your day like? On very busy, active, physical days, maybe you need just a walk or a gentle yoga class. On your days where you're mostly sitting around the house or perhaps you're sitting in an office chair, then maybe you need those higher intensity things. It should be about balancing your life rather than this is good and this is bad because that's such a black and white way of looking at it and I don't think the issue is black and white at all. I hope that helps. I know that was a bit of a wishy-washy answer. If you have any questions about the things that are brought up in this video, make sure you leave it in the comments below and I'll get to you with an answer. All right, the next question I've been asked is, what diets or food do you recommend for fertility? Let me just start by saying, not the expert when it comes to food. I made a lot of changes for myself, but I haven't done any study into this area. Yoga, that's my area. I try not to give advice specifically on things that are within my scope. However, with that being said, I really love the work of Alyssa Vitti. She wrote the book, Woman Code. I'll leave that linked below. I found that so helpful and it just made so much sense to me. So you know a lot of my work is around the cycle and living different depending on which stage you're in because your hormones are changing, you feel different, your body needs different things and her work is perfectly aligned with that. So go and check that one out because I think she just has so much to share and she will share it so much better than I will ever be able to. So the third question I got was, I'm worried that we are not financially stable enough for a baby. Do you think that could be holding us back? So. I think you probably know by now that I think our thoughts and our emotions are incredibly powerful on our body. All my yoga classes are about that, unpacking what we think, the mindset, what's going on in our bodies. But I think most telling about this question is the fact that you're asking it. If you're asking it, then to me that tells me 
you know there's something up with that. I don't think that will be the issue for everyone because I think a lot of people who have no money fall pregnant and it's not an issue. But I think the fact that you are asking it means that it's an issue that you probably need to dive a little bit deeper in. The way that you go into this a little bit deeper will be up to you. You could start just by simply talking to your partner. You could do some journaling on it. You could meditate on it. You could go and talk to a counselor. You could talk to me. There are a number of things that you could do to start unpacking what this actually means for you. But yes, I definitely think our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings and just that mindset around conceiving can really impact what happens in our physical body. All right, question number four. What other things do you recommend to calm the nervous system when trying to conceive? So I'm assuming you mean in addition to yoga and meditation because that's what I always share. So let's pretend that they're off the list. They would be my top two, just FYI. But the next couple of things that I personally found really helped. So after my third loss, I was, I actually didn't even realize at the time how anxious I was. Um, but a few months after that, once I'd been to a lot of counseling and done a lot of healing work around it, I was like, whoa, I didn't even know how wound up I was. So the things that really helped me, number one, journaling. So for me, writing is like therapy. It gets all this crazy out of my head and onto paper. So every morning I would just write a stream of consciousness. It was mostly ramble and meant nothing to anyone else but me, but it just helped to like start each day with a clean slate. So number one, 100% journaling. And I think I start there because that kind of led to all the other stuff. I didn't know I needed to look into this other stuff until I kind of unpacked what was going on in here. The second thing that I found really helpful was acupuncture, and this is recommended a lot in fertility circles. I wanna start by saying with this one, find someone who you can really connect with and relate with. I've heard varying reports of some women who hated it, but I don't necessarily think they hated the acupuncture. I just think they didn't have a good relationship with the person. So make sure you find the right person. This was certainly the case for me as well. There was someone that I really connected with and someone who I didn't. So make sure you find that right person. You don't want someone who's adding extra stress to your plate at this time. So if going to acupuncture feels stressful, that's not the right person for you, find someone else. But I do remember that first time I went in, I'd never had acupuncture for anything before this. I didn't know what to expect. I just heard that it could be good literally remember the feeling of my body like melting. <laughs> I never had it as significant as that first time and I think that's because my anxiety wasn't as high as that first time. But yeah, that first time was just like, whoa, this is powerful. And after that, I just kept monthly appointments, I think, and that really helped me just to stay on top of that anxiety, especially during the two-week wait. Really recommend going and getting some acupuncture. So the third thing that I really recommend is something so obvious and something that won't seem remarkable but can be and that's walking and i think this is really underrated and i think it's underrated like a lot of things we look for all the answers to find what will make us the healthiest or the most fertile or fix our problems and often the answers the real answers are the same they're the logical things we know we're meant to do to stay healthy but we don't because they're so simple instead we look for like the magic pill or the secret and I don't think there are secrets. I think good health is like moving your body, eating your greens, drinking your water, sleeping, like doing all those normal, regular things that we tend to forget when we're feeling stressed and anxious. So walking is so great. It's free. No one can sell it to you. No one can take it away from you. If you combine that with walking with a friend who you can vent to, it's going to be like doubling as therapy. So I think when you're going through such a challenging experience like this, walking can be so great because you can just, even if you just do 10 minutes, walk around the block, get your heart rate up, get your blood pumping, you'll feel better, you'll relieve a little bit of stress. Jeez, I really need to like find a way to market walking somehow because I'm really passionate about it. And then the fourth thing that I really recommend doing is just sleep. I think it can be so hard to sleep when you're stressed and unfortunately the cycle just perpetuates because you can't sleep because you're stressed and then your cortisol levels skyrocket and you end up with more stress and it just goes round and round and round. So starting to create some good routines around sleep can be helpful turning um, phones and screens off an hour or so before bed, reading in bed, reading something unrelated to fertility, like get a novel, get a something that makes you feel good. Sexy novels are great because it'll also put you in the mood, but just something that can help you switch off from the struggle a little bit and get into that good place for sleep and hopefully getting 
eight hours of sleep a night if you can, hopefully having a regular schedule, going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time. That's really gonna help your nervous system. Again, not a sexy answer, not something that I can sell you, but just something really practical that I think we often overlook as something that can be so helpful. All right, and then the last question I've got is how do I learn to be patient instead of expecting this cycle to be the one every time? And I remember this feeling so well, like I can almost drop myself back into that time so clearly in my body, like I feel it in my body still. I just feel that, that gripping, that fear in my heart, that sickness in my belly that just was like, when is this going to happen? Like, how long am I gonna to have to go through this? And that dread of feeling like, this could be like the next five to 10 years of my life. Like, I didn't know, I had no idea how long it was gonna be. And I just, I know exactly what you're talking about and I know how hard it is to try and find patience when this is something you want so much. So I can only share what helped me and hopefully that in some way helps you. So for me, after our third loss, as you may already know, we took quite a big break. And it was in that time where I gave myself the chance to not think about it for a while that I was able to come to the perspective that I was gonna let go of the when. And I wish I could tell you exactly how I came to that part in my thinking, but I think it was just, I eventually came to decide that I was gonna stop focusing on when, that I was gonna let go of the grip a little of thinking this cycle. And I was just going to trust that there was another baby for us. So I was gonna allow myself to feel excitement and to imagine and to vision in my head holding this baby and my other children meeting this baby and my husband and the birth and being pregnant and all of those good things. I was gonna let myself feel that and feel the excitement of that, but I was gonna let go of gripping to it had to be soon, it had to be this cycle, it had to be within some certain planning time frame, which was so hard for me because I'm a planner. Like I like to know maternity leave is gonna start here, I'm gonna take this many weeks off and then I'm gonna go back to work and blah, blah, blah. I found a way to let go of that. And in that I found a lot of peace and a lot of freedom in that I stopped planning around a baby, but I was still hopeful for a baby, which was a nice place to be because before that I was so like strict on planning and like restricting what I would plan because I thought oh, I could be pregnant by then or I could have a baby by then. And you almost stop living a little bit. So I kind of got back to just living and trusting, if that makes sense. It's a hard place to get to. I'm not gonna tell you the lie that it was like this change decision and I was done. It took a lot of journaling. It took a lot of meditation, a lot of yoga, a lot of counseling, a lot of things for me to get there. But that at the end of the day was the change for me. I, came to trust that it would happen, but I let go of the when, which I think is really important. So hopefully that helps you in some way. Like I said, it's not a oh, magic pill. I wish I had a magic pill for you, but I don't. I just wanna send you so much love and hope on this challenging journey. I know if you've come this far and you've watched to the end, yeah, you've got a lot in it. So thank you for being here. If you haven't done any of my yoga classes, I'll leave a couple linked below, a meditation for you. Thanks for being here and I hope to see you again soon. Namaste.